Now, this is Mr. Gosar from Arizona for five minutes. Controller General, it's good seeing you again. Absolutely. U.S. involvement in Ukraine has been an epic disaster, resulting in hundreds of thousands of military and civilian casualties. Each day without peace is another day that jeopardizes the fragile security the world has enjoyed for decades, free from the devastation of nuclear weapons. But our blank check for this war is coming at a cost of our own military readiness. At our current pace, it will take five years to restock our Javelin missiles, 13 for Stinger missiles. Every one month, six years' worth of our 155 millimeter artillery rounds are expended or disappear. The horrible decision to give American taxpayers' dollars to a corrupt regime is not the only reason why the U.S. military readiness is suffering. The recent GAO report has found four critical areas where our DOD is at risk of losing over $1 billion due to mismanagement, waste, and fraud. Mr. Darrow, let me quote a line from your report. The Department of Defense needs to improve oversight of its weapon systems and to make better informed investment decisions to ensure the timely delivery of cr critical capabilities to the warfighter. Mr. Darrow, given that fact that the U.S. munition stockpiles have been significantly depleted, how has the decision to meddle in this foreign war on the other side of the globe affected the military readiness of the U.S.? Now, one of the things that we're, we've been asked to do is provide oversight by the Congress on what's happening to the funding that we provided. And one of the things we're gonna look at is that very issue, particularly in terms of replenishing the stockpile. I'll ask M Mr. Uh, DiNapoli, who's our expert in that area, to elaborate a bit, Congressman. It's a good question. Uh, many thanks for the question, it is good. As Gene mentioned, we are kicking off a series of reviews to take a look at what type of uh, 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 weapons and assistance has been provided to Ukraine. As of last month, $39 billion, and you know, over 75 different types of goods and services have been provided to the Ukrainian uh, armed forces. Um, as part of that, we are going to look at the replenishment of those, how the decisions were made to what to replenish, how to replenish it, what's the cost of that replenishment, and the impact on sustainment and readiness. So, in, in, Congressman, excuse me, we also have work ongoing looking at the readiness issue. We've been focused on that a number of, uh, of years now. Gotcha. So now, in your discussions with the DOD, have you noticed an, a special push to restock ammunition and weapons? Um, yes. In our early uh, observations in our discussions, they're definitely focusing on making sure that the supplies of critical things that are needed by our armed forces are, uh, are available when needed. From your vantage point, are they at acceptable rates? So we're continuing that, we're, we're continuing that analysis. I can't give you an answer right now, but we hope to have that report out to you by the end of the year. Love to have that. Now, there have been over 107,000 drug overdeaths de deaths in the year, this year 2022. Much of this death is due to policies that perpetrate open borders. Has GO, GAO issued recommendations to the Department of Homeland Security on steps that the agency could take to deter illegal border crossing and to more easily and effectively return illegal aliens to their country of origin. Yes, we have. I'm gonna ask uh, Charles Johnson to come to the uh, table, our expert in that area, or Rebecca. Rebecca Gambler, I'm sorry. You can, you can go back. Good morning, thank you for the question, Congressman. Yes, GAO has made a number of recommendations to DHS over many years related to its efforts to secure the border. Those recommendations include things related to uh, better oversight and monitoring of border security efforts, um, better performance measures so that uh, we can assess uh, what we're getting out of investments made in border security, and we're continuing to follow up on those recommendations over time. So can you commit to a report by GAO on policy recommendations Homeland Security should take to stem the tide of illegal immigrants? We would be happy to work with uh, your office on uh, specific areas of interest that you're um, interested in GAO taking a look at and reporting on. Gotcha. Now my last question. Many prisoners are being held, uh, allegedly committed crimes on January 6th of 2021. They're being held in deplorable conditions in two D.C. jails. There are reports that the prisoners are prevented from seeking counsel, had their freedom of religion violated, been denied medical care, refused access to exculpatory evidence, and been forbidden basic hygiene products to keep themselves groomed and washed. Are you aware of these violations of prisoners' rights? I'm going to ask uh, Charles Johnson, to, uh, he's our expert in, the, in this area in the Bureau of Prisons. I'm 
Go ahead, Chair. Uh, thank you. Uh, Congressman, we have not specifically looked at that particular issue. We have been doing some studies looking at the federal management of the prison system, which you know is included in the high-risk report this year as a new addition. Uh, we are aware of some mistreatment of some of the uh, incarcerated individuals at certain facilities. Uh, the particular one in the district we have not looked at, uh, but we'd be happy to take a further look at that. Would you commit to a report to Congress on that very subject? Uh, we would definitely look at it and reach out to your staff to have a further conversation on that issue. Thank you very much. Good seeing you again. Good to see you.